As a Canadian, Jesse is used to being ignored, and so he made it his mission to cement himself in Yu-Gi-Oh! history, fighting through some of the fiercest competition in the game, like the Human Centipede, Penguins, a middle-class Brazilian armed with enough hand traps to negate a small military compound, and perhaps the most difficult end boss of all time, a man from Ecuador. You too can enjoy Phantom Nightmare format by simply purchasing three Fire King structure decks and committing Grand Theft Auto. I will die on this hill, but by playing only one copy of Diabell Star, Jesse technically won the UDS with a budget deck. To quote Gage's least unhinged take, the best thing about this format is that you don't need to interact with poor people. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit of what happened this weekend. Most notably, of course, for those of you sleeping under a rock, Mr. Bessie Botton himself won the UDS of the UDS of all UDSs to conquer the UDSs, the Ultimate Duelist Series Invitational of the Champions of the UDS. And uh, Pac managed to win another YCS at the 3 versus 3 in YCS Costa Rica. Now, I want to take a look at this discussion in about two and a half portions here. Let's talk a little bit about the concept of Tier 0 uh, and whether or not that's good or not good, because that's currently where we're at right now. That's looking like what the current format is, especially when you look at the deck breakdown uh, in the region of upwards of 82% of top cuts uh, or attendance, I suppose, in the place of UDS. We're running running some snake eye variant, a little bit divided between Fire King and Pure, Fire King edging out ahead slightly more than Pure Snake Eyes, but yeah, it's a, it's a snake eye format. If you don't like snakes on the plane, well, um, this is going to be a bit of a rough one for you. Now, uh, let's begin with my first uh, sort of 0.5 point preface here, alpha patch note description, disclaimer, I suppose. Uh, one of the uh, points here is that regardless of whether or not you like teaser, you dislike teaser, you think it's a good thing, a bad thing, um, the point is, is that if you do want to participate in this current format at the level of which uh, the majority of the people are taking part in, at least in terms of top cut representation, you're going to be forking out roughly over four digits worth of currency. Yeah, you're looking at easily 1k plus for a full Snake Eye deck from uh, everything that you need, side deck, main deck, extra. And, uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you, as someone who is really passionate about this format and actually really wants to dump... Uh, ha! <laughs> dump. Uh, are we editing that out? Probably not. As someone who really wants to jump into this format and take part in these mirror matches and go through all the fun little you know, puzzling and uh, problem solving that exists in Yu-Gi-Oh, which is building your deck according to the meta trends, etc, etc. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm priced out of this format. I'm just, maybe I'll open a P.O. box and someone can give me a Snake Eye core. I'm not going to do that. That would be scumming. Uh, but hypothetically, you know, that would be great because I would love to play this format, but I just, I'm not going to because I can't afford it. I don't know what to tell you, but I just, I, I don't have the finances to be able to take part in playing Snake Eye Mirror Match. I'm going to have to borrow that and play uh, someone else's deck at Locals for a few weeks to get caught up on things, basically. Uh, but in terms of my observations and what I've been seeing, um, it seems to be a pretty fun mirror match for the most part, although things might degenerate a little bit into some toxic, unhealthy stuff that we usually see every single format. <laughs> Floodgates! Uh, but that's a discussion for a little bit later. Let's focus on a little bit on the concept of Tier 0, which is what we're looking at here today. So point number one, uh, most important of all, is that this is going to be quite a frustrating time for a lot of players because whether or not you do like or dislike Tier 0, if you do want to participate in this format and any kind of competitive successful chance of doing well, uh, you're probably going to have to uh, yeah, spend a lot of money. Or play Fluander or Kashtira, I guess, if you're looking to be on a bit of a budget. I mean, Kashtira won Glasgow Regionals, so, you know, that I, I can't think of a better representation of the metagame than what happens in Scotland specifically. So, in theory, over here, Kashtira is the best deck. So, you know, congratulations for all of you budget players. Although I don't even think Kashtira is that budget. Is, isn't Theosis still, like, expensive? Anyway, so Tier 0 can be positive uh, if some of these conditions are met. It's cheap enough to get into. And, of course, uh, if the mirror match is good. But, yeah, provided that, that number one, the meta is good and uh, it's cheap enough to get into, tier 0 can maybe sometimes be fine, but um, I suppose a different angle is, uh, well, what about diverse formats? Now, we just came out of a format where there was probably, like, actually just, like, 15-plus viable decks that could, like, at any one time take a YCS. A bit much, um, generally, from a viewership perspective, at least, and a, um, you know, a watcher's experience, uh, it, it, that's good because you get a little bit of variety, some diversity, um, but from a competitive standpoint, uh, preparations and things like that can sometimes feel a little bit hard and rough to get into the game. Like, how do you... How do you tech out? How do you prepare uh, for a format in which there is like like 15 viable decks, right? Like that that's obviously very difficult. Uh, so generally, somewhere a little bit in the middle tends to be where the more enjoyable, fun formats exist, where you have like two, three region of uh, number of viable decks in any one time, and then whatever rogue options exist under that at perhaps a less representative 
uh, rate. So that's kind of that first part out of the discussion here. Let's move on to the next part, and that's talking about the specifics of Snake Eye. Well, uh, over this last weekend, we saw a pretty even uh, split between some of the, uh, the, the, the builds. There's, there's Pure, and then there's Fire King is pretty much what your answers are. Uh, I don't think I saw any Rescue Ace. Uh, I, it's probably doable. It's probably viable. I mean, anything with the fire attribute is probably viable right now if you stick in enough bonfires in a Snake Eye engine with a level 1. Uh, so probably that's going to be viable. But we did see predominantly Fire King um, and also the pure Snake Eye version. Utilizing uh, the next point that I want to bring up is the number of hand traps that people are playing. Perhaps it's something that people do in general because it's just the safest thing to do and it's the most uh, kind of comfortable sort of approach that a lot of players have to a brand new set, brand new format is like, well, how do you start to tech in and uh, build for the current metagame? Hand traps are usually the safest thing. Just keeping it nice, good old faithful and simple with activate Ash, stop your search, trade with an infinite impermanence, potentially try and flood out your opponent with a droll and Lockbird, although that's a card that I think isn't very good against Snake Eyes especially not the Fire King one. But yeah, that's a, that's a card we've seen um, definitely been played in a lot of main decks. And uh, that's usually been the approach. Jesse Cotton, for example, played 15 hand traps, 15 individual unique hand traps. Droll, Ash, Valor, Nib. Did he play Valor? He definitely played Ash, Imperm, Droll, Nib. Um, and then more on top of that, plus three cross out and a copy of Talents, totaling 19 defensive cards in the main deck. That is 19 cards that do absolutely nothing for your win condition and have no synergy with your deck well i mean i guess there's technically some synergy with a level one but anyway the, besides the point right like it's a very hand trap heavy format and kind of what most people decided to play this weekend which is i find to be a frustrating approach in generally any kind of meta because a lot of that can sometimes boil down to gambling and like you activate ash on an ash or, an, or wait or you probably ash would be held until they try and special the flamberge uh but a lot of it can sometimes be down to like trading hand traps like imperm into your opponent's summons and then just hoping that they haven't got the extender and praying that your two hand traps is enough to stop them and then you can play and not get counter hand trapped on your turn uh, i find that to be uh, probably not the best way to approach any kind of uh, mirror match and i feel like that's probably the most frustrating part of this format if it ends up being that way because it's very early days and we don't know conversely the other way to look at it is there are pure snake eye versions of the deck which uh, shout outs to juan andrade for getting second place playing only nine hand traps in the main but focusing on the most important ones and opting to go for some more board breaking capabilities utilizing some popular cards i say popular cards it's it's really interesting how long this card has been in the game. That's enemy controller. 20 cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame, am I right? In and out of the format. And here we are in today's day and age. We see Econ of all cards being uh, still played until now in a high power deck like Snake Eye. Also playing things like Chalice, which is interesting. Uh, I suppose the idea behind Chalice is that... I don't actually know what the difference between Chalice and Imperm are, realistically. I suppose it's good to draw off of talents, unlike Imperm, which if you already have a board drawing, Imperm does essentially nothing. So I guess there's that. Um, and of course, uh, there was some people even playing Super Polymerization this past weekend, which is pretty neat. A card which uh, some people may or may not start to adjust their end boards uh, to beat, depending on uh, whether or not Super Poly is going to become popular or not. So this is kind of where we're at with the, um, the divide between the players of like, do I go all in on hand traps? Do I play some board? breakers do i play fire king or do i play pure i like the pure version more i think it's a little bit more enjoyable first and foremost but also the added ability to play sort of uh more defensive cards and kind of just more non-engine but also trying to maintain some of that consistency with uh just maintaining 40 i think is the most important thing which I don't think any of the top decks from the UDS actually did, which is a bit of a strange one in my opinion, but at least in pure, I think I definitely want to stick to 40 cards. And then having all of those defensives on top of that to back you up is really, really strong. I think one of the better things about the Snake Eye deck specifically is that it's very difficult to floodgate. There's not a lot of cards that actually hurt it really well, especially in the mirror match. You're not going to be playing Shifter in the mirror match. Um, and even Shifter sometimes might not do it. <laughs> we watched on stream uh, Shunping play against Fluander, get shifted, get evenly matched, and still win. So, like, does Snake Eye have any weaknesses after all? I don't know. Like, that's kind of crazy, right? Uh, so, it's it's pretty difficult to floodgate Snake Eye, um, and there isn't really any crazy blowout floodgates in the mirror match either, other than potentially Dweller, if people start making that. He did play Parallel Exceed, which was a very neat card, um, and I guess Anti-Spell as well was in a lot of side decks, which, if you flip that going first, can turn off a lot of cards, but even then, depending on your hand, some hands can just play through and not actually utilize too many spells. Anyway, this has just been a very, very quick, brief uh, surface level analysis of where we're at. My thoughts on the current game, my thoughts on the current meta and where we stand in terms of the TCG. And uh, overall, I think I'm pretty excited, but also a little bit apprehensive.
apprehensive to see which direction this takes. I think the Mirror Match and Snake Eyes uh, as a deck is really cool and fosters a lot of skill expression. And I think the best and top players will be able to uh, come up with some lines and combos we've probably never even seen before and uh, build in such a way that might be interesting. And hopefully uh, we'll start to see some things that aren't as you know, straightforward as here's a bunch of hand traps and here's some snake eye cards. We'll see how quickly this format gets to being solved. Uh, but overall, right now, um, this could uh, this has potential to be a pretty good format. But also, there's a world where this becomes completely doomed and we end up with a super solved total tier zero format with no other ways to play any other deck. Uh, maybe we'll see some voiceless voice uh, being a little bit better soon. But until then, you know. We'll see. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the current metagame and the format where you see this going and any uh, things you want to share in terms of the Snake Eye Mirror Match or the current metagame. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Adios.